Hi everybody, so today I am making a bolognese sauce to go with pasta in my crock pot and I thought I would just show you how I put it together and how I make it. This is something I quite often do during a busy week when we're out at work and I put stuff in the crock pot before I leave in the morning, we get home and it's ready to eat practically, just need to cook up some pasta or whatever. Today happens to be New Year's Eve, I want to have pasta and bolognese and garlic bread for our New Year's Eve supper. Um, and so I've, I'm doing a few extra steps that I perhaps wouldn't normally do um, if I were doing it for work. I would just throw everything in the pot, crock pot and let it cook. When I've got the time, I do like to cook off some of the things before they go in the crock pot. I think it just adds a bit more flavour. Um, so I'll show you what I'm using and I'll get everything started and I'll show you the various steps I go through to turn these ingredients into a delicious sauce for pasta. So you need a little bit of olive oil, garlic, and I'm using the very lazy chopped garlic. Um, a large onion, I didn't have large, the ones in my bag this week were quite small, so I'm using two small onions. Um, a package of mints, as you know, we use turkey mints for just about everything. We do sometimes use pork mints, but whatever mints you use, then just a regular package, um, a 500 gram, 400 gram package of mints. You could easily make this double if you were making for a crowd. Um, if you're having people over and you wanted lots of pasta sauce or you wanted some to freeze, you could easily double this up with a large package of mints or a double pack of mints and then just double up most other things as well. You don't always need to double on your seasonings, but um, certainly a little bit more than you would put in for just a, a single pack of mints. Then over here, um, again, this varies a little bit what I add in. It depends what I've got, but I've got a sad looking pepper and some sad looking mushrooms that need using up. So I'm going to use both of those in. Um, some chopped Italian tomatoes, um, a, pack, a carton of passata, um, just regular passata, some Worcestershire sauce and some black pepper. One thing I haven't got out on the counter that I will use is some red wine. Again, that's something I use for like a special um, time when I'm at home to, to prepare it. I don't always put red wine in, but as it's New Year's Eve, I am. Um, some tomato puree, two stock cubes. I'm using beef stock cubes. Although Tony doesn't eat beef, he doesn't mind like beef stock cubes in things and that sort of thing. So, um, but whatever stock cubes you've got are fine. Then you could use a mix of Italian herbs, but I'm using thyme and oregano and some bay leaves and then a little pinch of chili flakes just to um, add a little kick to it, just a tiny pinch. And once it's cooked in the slow cooker most of the afternoon, it's not going to be particularly spicy, but you can leave that out altogether. As I say, the only other thing I'm going to use is about a half a cup of red wine, um, regular drinking wine. I don't ever buy the cooking wine because it's sort of vinegary. I would, I would use in cooking a wine that I would be happy to serve at the table as well. So I will just grab that from the cupboard before I get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to cook off the onions and garlic a little bit. I'm not doing the peppers and mushrooms, but I think if you um, sort of almost caramelize the onions, you get a much better flavor in your sauce than if you just throw them in raw. So you can do it either way, but that's how I'm going to do it today. So I'll get that started and then I'll come back and um, show you the next step. Okay, so I've just um, put the onion and garlic in, it's about half a tablespoon of olive oil, just softened them for just about five minutes until the onion's nice and soft and the garlic flavour has developed. You don't, you want it on a really low heat, you don't want the garlic to burn especially, but you don't even want the onions to brown, you just want it nice and soft. Um, so I'm going to put that straight into the slow cooker now, then in the same skillet I'm going to put the mince and brown that until it's Obviously I don't need to cook it through, it's going to cook for five or six hours in the crock pot, but I do want it to be browned because that helps to develop the flavour. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, so the mince is nicely browned, I'm going to just add that to the crock pot with the onions and garlic. And then this is the red wine I'm using, it's uh, Shiraz. I'm going to just use half a cup and I'm going to pop it into the pan, bring it up to a simmer and that will just take all the kind of any little sticky bits on the pan from the onions, garlic and meat um, and the juices that have come out of the meat. It will take that and add a bit of flavour. I'm just going to simmer it just for a minute or so to burn off the alcohol and then I will add that into the crock pot as well. So once that's going, I'll come back and show you it. Okay, so there's the red wine. It's just bubbled away. 
um, for just a few minutes while I chopped up the other vegetables. So I am going to pour that in with the um, meat and the onion and garlic mixture. And then I'm going to add the chopped peppers and mushrooms, can of chopped tomatoes, the carton of passata, two tablespoons of tomato puree, the two OXO cubes, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, about a teaspoon and a half of oregano and a teaspoon of thyme, two bay leaves, about a teaspoon of the chili flakes and a sprinkling of black pepper. And this is one of those things that I would use ground black pepper for rather than um, the, that, the grinder. Um, just that way you get it throughout the whole um, mixture. So I'm going to put that all in the crock pot, give it a mix, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like and then how long I'm recooking it for. And so there is everything all combined in the slow cooker. So as I add each extra ingredient, I do give it a good stir to make sure that that particular layer of flavour is kind of well combined through the mixture. Um, especially when it comes to things like the tomato puree, um, the Worcestershire sauce, the seasonings. I just give it a good stir each time I add something and that way I know it's all well combined in there. Now I'm just going to pop the lid on. It's on the low setting, number one um, setting. That is on there. <laughs> um, and then I will leave it to cook all afternoon. It's currently two o'clock. We'll probably eat about seven and it will just keep cooking away until we're ready to eat. As I've browned the meat, it won't matter if we um, if we eat a little bit earlier. If I didn't brown the meat, you'd want to give it probably at least six hours to make sure that meat is cooked all the way through. Um, but this will be okay with four hours, something like four to five hours. And then we'll cook up some pasta and some garlic bread to have with it this evening with some cheese on the top makes a really delicious meal but of course as you know a meat sauce can be the basis of so many other things if you wanted to make a big crock pot full of this and then portion it up into the freezer you could use it for shepherd's pies you could use it for chilies you could use it for um something so for other pasta dishes um later on just to defrost it and add some cooked pasta and you're ready to go um, you could use it for pasta bakes. Um, there's lots of uses of a basic meat sauce like this. So anyway, I'm going to pop the lid on this and leave it to cook while we get on with our New Year's Eve afternoon activities. And so full of steam, there is our finished sauce. So that's had about four and a half hours in the crock pot, almost five hours. Um, and I've got some over here, some spiral pasta cooked. And I'm just going to combine it all together. Um, and then we'll have that with some grated cheese and some garlic bread. But it's really rich. Um, by not adding any water to it, I just had the passata and the chopped tomatoes. It gives you a nice rich sauce. And then that little bit of red wine just gives a little extra depth of flavour. You can see all the steam coming off of it because it has literally, I've literally just turned it off. So um, yeah, that's our crock pot bolognese sauce for serving with pasta but there are so many other things you can do with this basic meat sauce and make the most of using your crock pot to let it just cook all day the smells have been really lovely in the kitchen this afternoon um, as it started to cook and come together so if you've never tried using your crock pot for something like this highly recommend it give it a go